I'm Jade Simonetto, and this is Food for Sport. Food for Squat is all about preparing the perfect meal for your unique weight training needs while maximizing flavor and minimizing cost. We'll focus on what fuels your body in order to get the physique you aspire to attain, whether it be bodybuilding, CrossFit, or strength training. In any given episode, we will highlight a regimen that will help you trim fat, gain muscle, or increase your strength. Either way, we've got the tasty brunches for those hasty crunches and the low-fat salad dressing for low-rep bench pressing. Backed by scientific and cultural research, Food for Squat will shed new light on the exercise-nutrition relationship. Information that's not always available in our daily lives, but information so captivating, you're definitely going to want to tell your bros about it. Today we cook and we push ourselves hard with our CrossFit athlete, Michel Letand. I'm Jade Simonetto, and this is Food for Squat. Jade has spent the better part of the last decade touring the world drumming with his metal band, Hate Eternal, and was voted among the 25 top modern metal drummers of the decade. He is notorious for his endurance, speed, and all-around power drumming. His passion for exceeding his limits has also crossed over to the world of powerlifting. During touring years, Jade always prioritized keeping fit on the road however he could. If he isn't hammering out inhuman speeds on the drums, he's deadlifting cars in Europe or front squatting dumpsters in Chicago, Illinois. He's a fitness nut with an insatiable need to always be in the know. He's always studying up and learning about every aspect of fitness, and now he's excited to share his findings and life passion with you. Today, we're going to be tackling a fitness phenomenon that has just exploded in popularity within recent years. I'm talking, of course, about CrossFit. The CrossFit workout involves constantly changing the nature of your workout with varied functional movements at high intensity. This sport has not only swept the globe, but it has its own official games televised around the world, kind of like strongman competitions or Ironman races. Chances are you probably know someone in your social circle who does CrossFit. That's how popular it has become. These athletes take their lifestyle very seriously. They train hard and they eat with precision. One of the common diets amongst CrossFitters is the Paleolithic diet, or Paleo, which basically means this. Feed yourself the way Paleolithic man did. We're talking about meats, fruits, vegetables, nuts, and anything that predates agricultural diets. On today's show, we're gonna design a meal for a good friend of mine who's been a CrossFitter for years, Michel Letang. I'm gonna dive into her world of CrossFit and see if I can hang. But first I'm gonna see if she can hang in the flavor pack world of my main guy over here, Chef Goldberg. Chef Goldberg has worked in some of the finest and best rated restaurants in Canada and he's barely 30 years old. He currently works as the chef of the Pois Penché and has developed his culinary flair under the likes of Daniel Boulud, Ricardo Bertolino, Apollo Giovanni, and under Chef Guy Rubino at trendy Toronto restaurant Rain, where he made his TV cooking show debut. Chef Goldberg's resume reads like a wares ware of haute cuisine. The famous Maison Boulud of the Ritz-Carlton in Montreal, La Queue de Cheval, and Le Latini are just a few of the reputed restaurants where he's sharpened his chops. Michelle, thanks for being here. Well, thanks for having me. Now, obviously you're a badass. How about you and I go head to head and see how much of a badass you really are? What do you have in mind? How about a clean and jerk competition, see who can lift more? Oh man, you're going down. Let's do this. Robert, count us off. Three, two, one, delay. Come on, Jay, come on, it's only 10, hurry up. Want me to go there and help you? Just kick it in your butt, man. It's not that much weight. Come on, hurry up, man. Come on. Nine. Ten. Ten. Oh. That was humbling. You kicked my ass so bad, I'm gonna have to go scrub the shame off with a loofah. There you go. <laughs> Michelle. 
Michel Latendre is a CrossFit athlete from Montreal, Quebec. Michelle is relatively a newcomer to CrossFit, but less than two years after her first competition in 2010, the 26-year-old Canadian has already ranked second amongst all the women in Canada. In 2012, she placed seventh in the Open, third worldwide after regionals, and 24th in the Games. She credits her success to two-a-day workouts, a morning workout doing a program developed by her coach called Give Em Cold Steel, followed by an evening CrossFit session. Whatever she's doing is working, as the 5'1 athlete can clean and jerk an impressive 175 pounds, 47 pounds more than she weighs. Now try that for starters. No matter the workout, bottom line is you gotta get fed. So why not enjoy what you put into your body? It's important that your body be properly nourished to achieve your fitness goals. Sadly, most of the pre and post workout meals we learn about are as visually appealing as sun baked roadkill. Ma, dried armadillo and gravel soup again? That's where our gourmet chef steps in and pumps up a recipe to complement your pump up session. Why settle for the same old chicken and rice when you can have lemon and thyme infused a rod for basically the same effective cost and without compromising your diet? You hear that? We're gonna infuse stuff. I'm so excited I could cut to a sketch. Number one, the eating sour gumballs face. Number two, the giving birth for the first time face. And finally, number three, the who is that in bed with my grandma face. These guys look like they're singing in choir. You zoom in there, just. So uh, how do you get the uh, salmon and trout to fall in love? Well, you kind of put them together in a, uh, in a pin together and they, uh, they kind of do their thing together, you know? I thought maybe just play the fish version of Barry White there for a little while. There's so many different kinds of pasta, like you have over here, you have a lot of short pastas, rigatoni, fusilli, penne. Angel hair pasta here, uh, Nicki Minaj hair pasta here. So the key with fruits and veggies, you gotta feel them, you gotta smell them, you talk to it, make sure it's over 16. You smell very good. My name's Rob. I like to cook you sometimes if you'd like to come over to my house. You know, flowers are a great decoration tool that we like to use, especially edible flowers. One thing I like to do that I did for Valentine's Day for the ladies, I take rose petals, then I dehydrate them, then I mix it with fleur de sel, and I make rose salt. It's pink and stuff. Bam. As intriguing as the paleo diet may sound, it can get pretty boring very fast. That's why Chef Goldberg's gonna take this caveman snooze feast into the 21st century. What we're gonna need is a low fat source of lean protein for better protein synthesis. Like fish? Fish is perfect. It'll metabolize quickly in the body. Okay, so I'll do up a nice darad. It's also known as porgy in English. What about the other pros that work out? We're gonna need a low fat protein with a side of carbohydrates. Wild rice works? Yeah, man. Ideal for post-workout so the body can replenish its depleted glycogen. What's glycogen? Is it that green stuff that fell on the Ninja Turtles and turned them into superheroes? No, that's mutagen. Your body stores glucose as glycogen and uses it as energy during heavy workouts. I don't think I've ever used glycogen. Yeah, it shows. Can you get glycogen from wild rice? Absolutely. Now we want these meals to look and taste exciting. Well, visually, beets always add some nice color. Nice. Beets are also an important source of betaine, a modified amino acid scientifically known as trimethylglycine, which has health-promoting and performance-enhancing properties. I'll use chioga beets for garnish. They're the prettiest beets in all the land. Chicks dig chioga beets. You've always got girls on the mind, Goldberg. All right, back to the paleo meal. It's hard for someone on that diet to find enough carbs without resorting to processed foods or grains. So we're gonna have to get some starchy vegetables. I'll do some parsnips and sweet potatoes. Parsnips and sweet potatoes? Parsnips and sweet potatoes. And what about that crazy flavor, man? We're gonna have to make this stuff taste like there's a party in your mouth and everybody's eating good food. That's a terrible analogy. Are you gonna make this stuff taste good? Taste good? I'm gonna make it feel good. Do you wanna get ripped? It's seven-time UFC champion George St. Pierre, and I'm here to get you ripped. 
You don't need all that crazy gym equipment. You look at that fat in the mirror and you say, do you think I'm afraid of you, man? But don't take his word for it. Did he just ask us if we think he's afraid of humans? Look, don't get me wrong. His workout DVDs have been working great for me. I just don't understand what the heck he's saying. You want to lose body fat, man? You want to be the life of the party? Then order my DVD. DSP no comprende. What's a life of day party? Does the cameraman know what a life of day party is? If you want to develop your shoulder muscles, put in disc two, which GSP calls the section for the punching. Are you crazy, man? Put down those potato chip, man. And if you're looking for lower body strength, put in disc three, or as GSP calls it, kicking all the heads. Call now and we'll send you a rush delivery. When there's only one man who can get it done. I've got one more favor to ask of you. It's a big one. But I told you, I was retired. He's got one more job to do. Yo, don't worry, I'm gonna get us out of here. This time, they're a little far away from home. You gotta be kidding me. My god, this prison isn't on the ground, it's on the moon! How do you break out of a prison that's in space? There's only one ship that comes and goes from here, and it leaves in 20 minutes. Well then I guess we better hurry up. Arnold Schwarzenegger. Ah, ah, ah. Sylvester Stallone. <laughs> and Jackie Chan. Escape Plan 2. Call down to Agro! Just get us out of here! Kaboom! I want to design a meal specific to your workout, but I do want it to taste better than the bottom of that tire. So let me ask you a few questions and let me figure out your diet. How do you feel your diet differs from other diets? Well, I follow a paleo diet, so I don't eat processed foods, rice, grains, cereals, dairy. It's the diet that's worked well for me to maintain my weight, and it's also um, the best thing that works for me in terms of performance. What would a typical breakfast be like for you? For breakfast, I usually have uh, three eggs with a spinach salad and some carrots. Do you have cheat meals? Not really. I got used to not having them. I used to have a lot of them, like I would have once a week, but I thought they were counterproductive to my goals, so I kind of just took out sugar from my diet, and now I don't feel the need for a cheat meal. So you don't ever have that desire to just jump in a bath of haagen -Dazs? <laughs> No, no, not so much anymore. <laughs> so do you do any kind of supplementation, protein powders, things like that? Yeah, so I do uh, do a post-workout protein shake, okay. which is a, um, an isolate uh, whey protein that I mix with veggies, uh, like frozen spinach and ginger that I mix up as a smoothie. And sometimes I'll take some branched chain amino acids, but I kind of keep the supplements to a very minimum. Just run me through a basically a shopping cart run for you at the supermarket. I'll always go in the perimeter of the uh, grocery store, so I stick to the fresh vegetables, fruits, um, meats, fishes, and then I go to my produce and then uh, kind of check out. So no craft dinner and uh, Mountain Dew? No, no craft dinner and Mountain Dew. How do you discipline yourself to eat well all the time? Well, it's part of my job. I mean, I compete for a living and um, it's just one of those things that at the beginning was really hard to implement, but when you understand the benefit from it, it's much easier to, to accept those, those sacrifices and then it just becomes habit. So I wouldn't be able to eat any other way now just because I've been doing it for so long and I, I just feel so much better when I do that. 
say you do eat poorly on a, any given day, do you feel a difference yeah, during training? Yeah, totally, yeah. So sometimes it happens to me during my training year that I travel and I can't bring my food everywhere I go, so I'm kind of forced to eat airport food and stuff like that and I just always feel like just low energy, groggy, kind of... It's never the same thing. It's not terrible, but it's not it's not perfect. So you know, you tell you can tell. Airport low main. <laughs> Michelle, they say you are what you eat. I do a lot of squats, so I'm definitely made of chicken breasts here. But I got a lot of Snickers chocolate bar going on over here. What are you made of? I love sweet potato, so I guess I have a sweet potato badonka donk. <laughs> and I love swimming. So my favorite fish is snapper, so snapper and sweet potato. <laughs> Now, obviously, Chef Goldberg is being very elaborate. <laughs> um, do you take this kind of time to prepare your meals at home? I do. I really enjoy cooking. Yeah. So I try to be as creative as I can because my diet, it is to a certain extent limited in what I can eat. So um, especially after workouts, I try to really vary the vegetables I consume. So I'll add some root vegetables that normally during the day I wouldn't, I wouldn't use. So what Chef Goldberg is cutting up there, I've, I use very, very often at home. So Robert, explain to me what it is that you're doing for the pre-workout meal. Grilled chicken breast, marinated in blood orange, lemon, garlic, thyme, rosemary, and underneath you have baby arugula, baby spinach, carrot shavings, and uh, beet greens wow. with cherry tomatoes. All right, let's dig in. Mm. You win, buddy. <laughs> That's really good. Well, we're gonna demolish this pre-workout that Robert made for us, and we're gonna cut to a commercial. Hi, welcome to Training Tips with Angelo Schifoso. Now, within recent weeks, I've been getting anywhere between a thousand and zero emails about the deadlift. So today, we're gonna be covering form. Now, I got my friend Gary over here. Gary's gonna be maxing out. Just get yourself right up against that bar right there. Yep, all right, now get your feet together. What's important here is that he keeps his legs stiff and straight as possible. Now, put your hands out like this, grab the bar, that's a double underhand, and that's how you want to rip weight off the ground. Get your back as rounded as possible. This is what I coined the candy cane, and this is crucial to lifting heavy weights. You ready, Gary? Give it all you got, you skinny loser. Oh, looks like Gary's the new mayor of Snap City. Well, hey, you know, I got to grab my trainer's fee, so just let me uh, yank that out of there. All right. Here's some painkillers for you. Take care of that back, huh? Are you tired of looking at your dog's double chin or your parrot's beer belly? Then bring your pets down to Jim Genicle's Gym for Pets. The gym that's for your pets. <coughs> we have got all the right training programs for all of your chubby animals. We've got aerobics for dogs. Cat boxing, lizard yoga, aquafit for fish. The efficiency of our programs becomes evident within days. But you don't have to take my word for it. Here is one of our satisfied customers. Here we are in the power kitchen. Why do we call it the power kitchen? Because it's just way more deadly, bro. We're gonna be creating two dishes that's gonna knock our athletes off their glutes. Rob, take it away. We're gonna let this meat sizzle. In the meantime, let's have a look at this week's Do You Even Lift Award. In this segment, we look at the best gym fails the internet has to offer. This is what happens when you don't feed yourself before a workout. 
Here we go, here we go, come on. Get up, get up, get up, get up, get up, get up. Yeah, there it is. Nice. <laughs> and that's why this guy wins this week's Do You Even Lift Award. If you're trying to burn body fat on a consistent basis, then insulin's the goal, or the lack thereof. Start your day with a carb-free breakfast and try and keep carbs out of your diet until dinner time and then really load up. Consuming all your carbs during your last meal will keep your body in a state of ketosis throughout the day, which means you are burning body fat all day long. Bacon, eggs, and ham is a great no-carb breakfast. And for lunch, try lean meat, avocado, and green veggies. This has been this week's Tip of the Week. We're back. Chef, tell us what we're about to munch on here. Grilled bavette that's been marinated in salsa verde. The salsa verde is basically garlic, onion, shallots, uh, some coriander, some parsley, and a little bit of olive oil, all blended up to make the sauce. Underneath, we have uh, roasted root vegetables, which are parsnips, uh, celery root, and uh, sweet potatoes. And uh, do you have a name for this dish? Well, I named it after Michelle. It's called Sexy Good Times. <laughs> <laughs> okay, hold the cheese. This meal is supposed to be dairy free. <laughs> oh my. All right, lifters, lift your forks. Excellent. I cook the meat rare, just how Michelle likes it. What I love about this meal is that even though you're eating smart, you don't have to cheat yourself out of flavor. Michelle, we asked that our guests rate our meals on the gainometer. Now, out of a maximum of 10 biceps, how many biceps would you give this meal? Out of 10 biceps, I'd have to say I'd give it nine. Big ones. That's huge. Can you feel the power of the nutrients coursing through your blood and your muscles? And your heart? <laughs> you know I can crush you, right? Would you? Because you know I can make this dish at your house if you like. Okay, how about I take Michelle to the power gym before you get yourself in restraining order territory, buddy? Oh man. Okay, in the meantime, why don't you just make us a second meal? Yeah, no problem. While these gym rats are in the gym, I'm going to show you guys how to make my dorade gris. I have my dorade that I put in a filet and I'm gonna just put two slices of lemon on top with a little bit of thyme just to infuse the flavor into the fish. So you just want to close it up nice and tight so the fish holds its shape and all the juices are locked in. Now this is gonna go in the oven and now I'm gonna do uh, the sauce that's gonna go on top which is in sauce vierge uh, which is uh, pretty much tomato, shallots, parsley with uh, lemon juice, capers and a little bit of olive oil and salt and pepper. I'm going to cut these in a small dice. For one tomato, I put about maybe a tablespoon full of capers. It's really kind of a light sauce and parsley and lemon just marry together really well. I'd say about a tablespoon of shallots in your sauce. Pepper. Olive oil and some fresh lemon juice. This will be our sauce for the fish. With it, we're gonna have wild rice. Now punch your bar. When you get up high, get underneath and punch your bar. Good. Hey Bob, what's all that noise over there? It's the wild rice. Well, that's really wild. To go with it, we're having an asparagus and beet salad. Over here, I already have my beets cooked. I got chioga beets, which are over here. I got yellow beets and I got red beets. And here I have white and green asparagus, uh, which I blanched. Wow, this looks amazing. What do we have here? Well, here you have porgy infused with thyme and lemon with an asparagus and beet salad. And then you have a wild rice underneath. And then on top you have a sauce vierge with a garnish with a little bit of chioga shavings and asparagus. <laughs> All right, Michelle, let's try this. Yes. Mm. Oh man, this is so good. Michelle, what do you think? 
I think this is a great meal. I think that the beet salad is excellent. The fish is super good. I can eat this like between workouts, before workouts, after workout. It's just, it's really good. I'm definitely gonna try this at home. Again, this meal feels like a treat. Low in sugar, packed with nutrients from the vegetables, and that veer sauce is spectacular. It really doesn't feel like you're eating a diet-friendly meal. Don't forget the asparagus. I won't. Asparagus is a vegetable people tend to overlook, but that should be added to any healthy diet as it has so many health benefits. It's low in calories and high in fiber. It's a natural source of an antioxidant called glutathione. Glutathione? that defends your cell's DNA against damage and extinguishes inflammation. Asparagus also contains aspergine, an amino acid that prevents fluid retention, which not only helps to lower your risk of blood pressure, but ensures that you look as buff as possible. Well, maybe I should eat some then, because Michelle's making my blood pressure skyrocket. Okay, maybe we should break for dessert. Well, Michelle, what would you like? Well, how about you guys give me 12 push-ups? You know what, Michelle? For you, anything. That's this week's show, folks. I'm Jade Cimento. Michelle, I want to thank you for coming by. I want to thank you guys for watching Food for Squat, the fittest cooking show on TV. And remember, if the bar ain't bending, you're just pretending.